Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to another Chris Hutton uh, Free Market Foundation vlog slash podcast. Um, I need to mention the vlog part every time in case Martin uh, takes it up with me. Um, I apologize for the sound of my voice and uh, some sniffling if it happens, as I'm sure many of you guys out there know. Once you have man flu, it's one of the worst uh, diseases to be struck down with. So I've been sick for a few days, but trying to um, muscle, muscle through and work through as, be- as best as we can. Also apologize for heavy breathing into the microphone, but trying to make sure that the sound is is at a good uh, level. Um, just one quick thing on last week's episode, we've now reached over 5,000 views, which is incredible. Um, I don't know what else to say, but thank you very much. I am very, very appreciative of that, um, that you all hopefully found something useful in it, that you obviously shared it with people um, for all the likes, all the comments, the dislikes. Um, any engagement we really really appreciate um, so now the the bar has been set and we need to reach 5,000 every week so good luck to all of you um, I hope you can reach that same high standard that you have I'm trying to respond to all the comments on the latest one as best as I can uh, so I apologize if I haven't yet uh, replied to you um, I'm trying to sort of cover everything as we try and do here at the FMF try and cover all the bases as best as we can so I'll try and get to them uh, as soon as possible but just thank you all very much I really really do appreciate it um, and it means a lot to know that our our work has a wide reach that it has in some influence and that it's generating discussion and debate uh, whether we all agree on it or not all the different to- topics and subjects it's very uh, very good to know that you all um, at least you know engage with the work that we do um, so so thank you all very very much for that um, this week I wanted to talk about the um, it's not a new topic uh, it's cropping up uh, it has cropped up a few times and it's back again a very convenient topic for for those in the political classes um, if you if you think about it um, they bring it up every now and then uh, now and then when the focus is a bit too much on them and their failures it's a convenient scapegoat for them to point to and blame for all sorts of different problems and and that is the the concept of white monopoly capital um, just off the bat my biggest problem with it and, and something that makes me really angry and frustrated and really um, really gets under my skin about white monopoly capital is that it implies it is it is based on the philosophical assumption that only white people are capable of creating wealth um, that only white people have abilities and skills um, and that all other people of, of uh, other races Africans Indians um, etc Chinese people that they're incapable of building wealth for themselves it is a very a deeply problematic view in my opinion it is pernicious it it, it thinks very little of other people it places a lot of value in the color of one's skin which to me is a really big problem um ayn rand i'm sure some of you if not most of you have read her works some of her works but she talked about uh, racism how it's the crudest uh, form of collectivism uh, because you ascribe the value of people's character to an accident of birth which is their skin color um White monopoly capital, when one adopts this concept and this view, it means that you think people can only create wealth based on the color of their skin. You don't think anything anything of their own individual abilities, uh, their skills, their work ethic. It's all based on your skin color. Um, and this, to me, is a real, real problem uh, to put people in these sort of categories, to, to look down on people based on the color of their skin, that they're so incapable of creating wealth for themselves, that it must it, it can only be created um, by white people and that it must be taken from them to be given to other people of other races, that people of other races are completely incapable of building wealth for themselves, if not for the government, <laughs> the helping hand of the government, giving them aid and money um, and taking it from, from other race groups. Um, I don't like talking about race race group versus race group class group versus class group this is all very marxist thinking putting people in very strict boxes um, not seeing people as individuals but only as having worth or not having worth based on the color of their economic class or their race group um, or their religion take your pick Um, and it's all very problematic i think it's endemic of societies which tend more towards socialism because socialism um, tries to place more and more control of the economy and of society in the hands of the state Um, and then the state or the people who are in charge of the state because there's always someone uh, you might think that socialism is supposed to be for the worker or the oppressed or 
or any of the above. Um, but at the end of the day, there's going to be people in charge who claim to represent the interests of the oppressed and the workers and whomever, whichever group you want to take, take your pick. Um, and they're always going to use the power of the state to favor their own group and push their own agenda. And so simply what happens with with placing um, political power in the hands of, of people and the fewer people you place, you give that power to, the bigger the um, the chance for abuse and corruption, um, as we've seen in South Africa. Um, so the second thing I wanted to bring up about why white monopoly capital and why it's problematic, it assumes very much that wealth is fixed. Um, now we've seen the data shows us that in the last century, as the world population has grown, more and more people have been lifted up out of poverty, and that's because of capitalism. Um, I know we think of China especially as communist, and politically it is, but they have implemented many reforms which are more towards the economic freedom side of things, and that's why more and more people are lifting themselves out of poverty. Um, wealth in a capitalist or more free market economy is not fixed. Uh, every person has different skills and abilities, um, different work ethic, different things they can bring to the table. And when they're freer to use those skills and abilities, they can trade with other people, they can work on their own skills and build wealth for themselves. Wealth is not fixed. Um, so we need to always keep that in mind. In a socialist society, and South Africa is leaning more and more socialist with more policies such as expropriation without compensation, um, the national health insurance, prescribed assets, all of this is all about concentrating economic power in the hands of the state. And in that case, wealth is going to be fixed. Then it's simply a case of wealth redistribution, not wealth creation. In cap Under capitalism, it's all about individual wealth creation, and that comes with certain responsibilities. And uh, as I'm sure some of you know, we don't always make the most rational, um, well thought out, uh, good decisions with our money. We make mistakes uh, every day with the money we have, um, the money we accumulate. We might make bad investments, we might buy the wrong car, uh, we might spend our money way too liberally, all sorts of things. But at the end of the day, it's our responsibility. So always keep that sort of um, distinction in mind with the wealth pie. Um, the more controlled an economy is, the more the wealth of a country, the more the economy shrinks because the politicians try and control it and use it for their own personal uh, spending projects, their own pet projects. And of course, they promise people who vote for them that they'll redistribute money from other groups to give to those groups. And now, and, and in that regard, you see more and more people leaving countries, especially South Africa. We know people are immigrating overseas. They're taking their skills and their money overseas. And with that goes more job chance for job creation and investment in the country. We know that there are more than 10 million unemployed people in South Africa. Apologies. Um, that's just according to the official numbers, so it's probably even higher in reality. Um, and that's partly due to restrictive labor policies and restrictive business policies, which make it very difficult for people to start businesses and to invest in the country. They have very little reason to invest in South Africa. Um, and those reasons are, are shrinking by the day, sort of year on year. Government is, is suffocating people more and more and more. And that's why they're heading overseas. Um, so we shouldn't be surprised that this issue of white monopoly capital is being brought up again. It's a convenient scapegoat. Um, it takes agency out of the hands of um, the out of control and out of the hands of individual people and tells them that um, someone else's success has come because of their misfortune, um, that wealth, it's also the view that wealth can only be stolen, never that it can be created, uh, that wealth is also always in the hands of one group and that it must be partitioned accordingly. So um, so in this way, it's, it's a method of, of controlling uh, society and controlling uh, voters. So it's, it's quite effective in that regard. Um, I'm hoping that more and more people become awake to this reality, that wealth should be about individuals and individual wealth creation, abilities, that sort of thing, that it shouldn't be about groups. Um, this is a wrong, immoral way to think about people. It takes away individu individual responsibility, accountability, and individual freedom, and it places all the control and the responsibility on the states. Um, whichever political party is in charge, this isn't about particular political parties, um, but it, it, it presumes that the state is the only, um, the only tool or, or agent who can lift us up and that we must give it more and more control uh, because then it will help us and it will give us houses and healthcare and food and data, um, airline, tickets, take your pick, all of the above. Um, so just try and, um, if you can, uh, question this concept of white monopoly capital because in contained within it, 
are many assumptions and presumptions, specifically about individual agency uh, for black and um, colored South Africans, uh, Indian people and colored people as well. It presumes that none of them c can create wealth for themselves, and it presumes that white people have supreme dominance over every other race. Um, and to me, that removes all power and agency from other people. And I, I don't think that's the right way to to build towards this new South Africa that we keep talking about all the time. Um, I don't think we should aim for a sort of society in which wealth is fixed, that where it's only redistributed, where people aren't free to stand or fall on their own two feet. Um, we only pay lip service to the struggles of those who fought against apartheid, another form of, of socialism uh, which try to control people. We pay lip service to those people and their sacrifices who fought against that when we put all the agency and ability and control on white South Africans and when we take that away from other South Africans and presume that um, they're only subject to the whims and wishes of one race group. Um, and it's, it's sad that the politicians use this, of course, um, but it indicates that they're worried probably about their own track record and they're trying to cover up their own failings. Um, white monopoly capital is a very convenient scapegoat and that is, um, that's quite problematic to me. So. On that note, I think I'll, I'll call it for today. I hope you uh, enjoyed this episode, that you find uh, that you found some of it useful. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, comment uh, everywhere. Remember, we have to reach that uh, that 5,000 view uh, um, bar again. So good luck to all of you. I hope that you can manage to, to reach that again. Um, I'm sending this out on Thursday, the 19th of um, September. So tomorrow on Friday, we'll have another Free Marketeers podcast. I hope you all listen into that with me and Martin and Mpiaki, uh, if I make it through the night with my man flu. But um, on that note, I'll, I'll end there. Thank you all once again for watching. Thank you for supporting me and supporting the FMF's work. We really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.